You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. Go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach on the Instagram. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. And if you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, just go and give us a follow at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram. Or you can always join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. I hope you are all uh, coming off of a very fun weekend. Um, I hope you had a wonderful Saturday and Sunday and maybe a nice little Friday night. Maybe you're watching Halloween Kills. Maybe you were drinking some of my No Filter Rosé. It's a Housewives-inspired rosé, 14% alcohol by volume, but less than a gram of sugar. Five fun designs, one lightly fizzy, crisp, dry rosé inspired by some of our favorite, most iconic housewives moments from Potomac, Atlanta, Beverly Hills, New Jersey, and New York. So if you want to try some of this delicious rosé, you can go to nofilterwine.com. That is nofilterwine.com. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. We have a lot to break down today. We're going to be talking about Travis and Courtney, Lala and Randall. Um, I had a Halloween Kills watch party, and I'll give you a little review, little spoilers from Halloween Kills, but we'll go over that too. Uh, Jay Edelson is still going after Erica Jane. Sutton Strack wants to be a lawyer. Paige and Craig were caught out filming Southern Charm. Lisa Vanderpump wants to return to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And then all of the Vicky and Steve Lodge drama. Ooh, yo, yo, so much to break down today. A um, couple of quick updates. Book Club will be returning Tuesday, October 26th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific on the Instagram at No Filter with Zach. So we won't have Book Club this week, so we have the week off of Book Club, so no live this Tuesday night, but we will be back next Tuesday, October 26th, and we'll be kicking things off with Dave Quinn's book, Not All Diamonds and Rosé. I've put the link in the description below, so if you're going to order your copy, order it. Click the link below. It is an affiliate link, so it does support the show, so I would appreciate that if you haven't ordered the book already. You can definitely order it from my Amazon affiliate link. Also, um, yeah, I guess that that was the major update is the book club will be paused, but we we will still be doing our regular uh, Thirsty Thursday night lives this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. So I will talk to you live then. Um, Before we get into all of the tea, I am coming into today's show with a very heavy heart. Um, I know some of you guys don't like when I get too personal, so I'm sorry, but um, today's a really challenging day for me, as I've shared with many of you guys before on this podcast or in some of my lives. I lost my grandmother this year, and today would have been her 70th birthday. Um, I've, you know, tried to... It's so interesting because I feel like when I say, oh, I lost my grandma, so many people, so well-intentioned, and I'm, I appreciate it so much, um, but so many people are like, oh, you know, I lost my grandmother too, and she was 94, and I used to love hanging out with her on Christmas every year. And for me, it's it's hard because my relationship with my grandmother was so much deeper than that. Um, she was like a mother and father wrapped into one for me, so it feels like it's the loss of a parent um, for me. And, you know, she was the one that I spoke to every single day. We FaceTimed three times a day. I spent every single weekend with her. I lived with her until I was 25 years old. You know, it just, it's a, it hits a little differently. So today's the first birthday that I will be celebrating of hers without her. And it's tough. And I have a very heavy heart today. And I, you know, I planned to tape this episode yesterday, which was on Sunday, so that it would be uploaded so that I wouldn't have to tape today. And then the audio got fucked up, so I have to tape today. Um, but I mean, I guess there's something about there. There's something in the universe that wanted me to tape today. So here we are. I hope everybody has a great week. I'm sending everyone a bunch of love today. I you know, hope you can send the same back to me. I know the weekend, the comments from this weekend after Friday's episode were were very hot and cold. Um, and I understood that, you know, Friday, I had a lot of strong opinions that I shared on the, on the show based off of the Beverly Hills reunion. And the message that I put out, I knew that the people that were ready to hear that message, it would have resonated with them. And the people that weren't ready for it, they weren't going to hear it. But... Like I said, I want to send everybody so much love this week. I hope you have a wonderful Monday. I hope you have a wonderful, you know, just week as we 
get into this fall weather. It's a little chilly here in LA. It's rainy today. Um, after this, I'm going to go and I'm going to get a cake and I'm going to get some flowers and I'm going to go visit my grandpa and we're going to spend the day together and, you know, hopefully have a good day. So just wanted to say, love you all. I love all the support and, and, and love that you've sent me. And I just hope that everybody has a wonderful day. And on the token of good news, I want to congratulate Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. They've gotten engaged. He did a very gorgeous, elaborate engagement on the beach, surrounded by rose petals. And it looks like they're in it to win it, which is kind of, it's exciting um, for them. And I, you know, that's some good news to start the week off with. I know some people are kind of hating and been like, oh, we'll see how long this lasts. But, you know, you know what? Let's see how long this lasts. I hope it lasts a very long time. You know, I've been I've been saying on my social media that I am ready to channel my own Kourtney Kardashian. And I don't want any more Scott Boy Disick, uh, Scott Disick boy, fuck boy energy. Like at this point, I want a Travis Barker or I don't want it at all. Travis is here. He got on a plane with Courtney. They went to Italy together. You know, they're making moves together. They definitely have had a long friendship and their relationship seems very hot and heavy. And I hope that this works out for them. The engagement was gorgeous. The ring is massive and so pretty. I mean, I, if I listen, when my Travis Barker, when he comes and he proposes to me, Actually, I don't want to get married, but I do want a ring like that. That's that's all I'm saying. I do want a ring like that. Give me that ice. On the contrary, however, there are rumors that Lala Kent and Randall Emmett have broken up. And by the fact, and um, yeah, since neither Lala nor Randall have spoken out to debunk those rumors, it does appear that they may be possibly on a break, possibly broken up. He was photographed at a hotel with some girls. There were rumors surfacing that he took them up his, to his hotel room and that he had cheated on Lala. Then she went on her Instagram and filmed a video of her checking into what looked like the Beverly Hills Hotel um, or the Beverly Hilton which hotel was it? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I recognize the wallpaper. Um, and she had one, one of the Beyonce Lemonade songs about how, you know, oh, now you're going to try to call and tell me that you're sorry. No way. To the left, to the left. Everything you own in the box to the left. So that's not so great. I hope Lala has a better week because that's that would be unfortunate if he really did cheat on her, especially since they just had their baby. She was just trying on wedding dresses like things were looking like they were really going somewhere. And now I'm really sad to hear that that may have happened. But Randall Emmett, like, come on, you are you're really going to get better. Someone, you know, hotter than Lala. like Lala is smoking and Lala's got confidence and Lala's got your baby. And so oof, they're not even married. So I guess she can't even get like spousal support or alimony out of him. She at the best she can get is just child support. <sighs> Lala, you should have you should have just eloped during COVID and then you would have been able to like, you know, take him to the bank. We'll see what happens. But Congrats to Courtney and Scott. i sorry. Congrats to Courtney and Travis. Poor Scott. Scott is listening to Easy on Me by Adele on repeat right now with, you know, a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken and some popcorn and a, a gallon of ice cream. So much love to Scott. I hope Scott has a much better week. I'm sure he's going to be happy for Courtney. But it's like, you know, when it comes to Scott and Courtney, it's like she was very clear. He tried to propose to her and she was like, no, you need to stop drinking. You need to stop doing drugs. You need to give up that party, party boy lifestyle if you want to commit to me. And he wasn't willing to give up that party boy lifestyle. And now she had to move on. And now she's in a happy relationship with Travis. <sighs> Don't be a Scott Disick, boys. Don't be a Scott. Be a Travis. Be a man. Speak up. Put it down. And let's get it. Okay, so for those of you that follow me on the Instagram, you'll know that I had a Halloween Kills watch party where we watched Kyle Richards in the sequel, the Halloween sequel with Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, I had a really fun, you know, night in. I invited some friends over. We made some Halloween-themed cocktails. I put together a little cocktail menu. Um, I had some cocktails that I that are they're posted on the Instagram. The the recipes are. I had one that was called the Scream Queen. One that was called the Deadly Punch, and then one that was called the Goodbye Kyle, which was very delicious. And I had one too many Goodbye Kyles and lots of rosé. Um, all of the the photos and and videos and stuff are posted on the Instagram. I also have an Amazon storefront that I put up that has links to like if anyone wants to host their own um, Halloween Kills watch party, 
the candy is there. The snacks are there. Um, the menu is up on the Instagram. Some of the bar tools are up there. The actual bar that I bought, like all of that stuff is available. If anybody wants to have a fun, cute little, cute little night in, whether it's watching Halloween kills or watching, you know, the Beverly Hills reunion or whatever, it's just a fun fall themed watch party. All the goodies are there that you can, that you can go and order. Um, it is an affiliate link. It is my Amazon storefront. I don't have any affiliations with any of the brands specifically, but they were all the things that I had. So if you want any of them, go check that out. I believe it's uh, amazon.com slash shop slash Zach Peter. Amazon.com slash shop slash Zach Peter. There's also like the Bravi, Bravo Beauty storefront and all that there too. So spoilers ahead, I am going to break down Halloween Kills. So if you want to watch the movie, then I would suggest you fast forward through the next few minutes uh, because I'm about to spill all of the spoilers from Zim Movie. First of all, I would rate the movie maybe a 4.5 out of 10. I expected way more out of the movie. I saw the last Halloween movie. I thought I think it was Halloween Returns. And then we have Halloween Ends, which is the third and final movie of this trilogy that comes out next year. So I just felt like this movie was a little unnecessary. Like the story wasn't like it was a good story, but it felt like a bonus episode. It didn't feel like it needed to be its own movie. So I was kind of like, okay with the fact that I streamed it on Peacock instead of actually going to the theater and, and watching it in and paying to watch it in theaters. I watched the last movie in theaters and that one was pretty good. I felt like we could have ended it there. You know, th- that one ended with Jamie Lee Curtis, who's the main protagonist in the Halloween series. And she locked Michael Myers in the basement and then set the house on fire. And then they got away and, you know, he could have died there and I would have been happy with that. But spoiler, shocker, he ends up surviving. And now we have other survivors of Michael Myers that are coming forward and they're getting the town all rallied up together to go and hunt Michael down. They're like, at this point, he survived too many times and we're going to hunt him down. Evil dies tonight. Uh, uh, uh. And one of those survivors was Kyle Richards character, Lindsay. She's in the movie. And I have to be honest. I'm very surprised that she was, I thought she was going to get like, you know, I thought she was going to get killed off within the first 10 minutes of the movie. I thought we were going to get a cute cameo and they were going to kill her off right away. But she was in consistently throughout the whole movie. She was in the movie more than Jamie Lee Curtis was in the movie. So, and also spoiler alert, she survived. So she had a one-on-one fight with Michael Myers, which at first I was like, okay, like, you know, Michael Myers is over here killing off, you know, teams of firemen and taking on the whole town. But Kyle Richards has a one-on-one with him after he slays all these other people and she makes it out alive. Who knew all it took to beat a, to beat Michael Myers was a housewife, a real housewife. So when Kyle was like, oh, this is my movie. I'm in this movie. I was like, yeah, girl, you have a cameo. And then I watched and I was like, oh, wow, she really is in this movie more than, you know, some of the other survivors of, of Michael Myers that ended up getting killed out. Like poor Lori, he like ripped her hair out. And I was like, oh, she's already old. Like, don't rip her hair out. It's already falling out. Like, just, you know, cut her off clean. Why you have to put her through that? She's an old lady, you know? But anyway... I would assume Kyle will be back since she survived this movie. She'll probably be back in the next movie, which will be the final Halloween ends. I thought it was overhyped. I was really excited to see it. Um, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was scary at all. I didn't think it was that funny. Um, You know, like scream is like very campy and kind of funny. And they're like in on the joke about them being a horror film. I didn't really get that sense. Some people are like, oh, this was more of a comedy, but it wasn't really more of a comedy. Like I said, the premise of it was that, you know, he is still alive, so everybody wants to go and hunt him down. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis, surprisingly, was also barely in the movie at all. Like, she was, like, missing from an entire, like, at least a third of the movie. And then the last two thirds of the movie, she was in the hospital room the entire time. She barely had any lines. She never left the hospital room. Like, all of these scenes were probably filmed when they wrapped the last movie. And so... I mean, she had a very easy week filming these. I'll just have to, I'll tell you that. There was hardly any Jamie Lee. And so I was like disappointed because I was like, she's like the main girl. How is there barely anything about her in there? And then there was a lot more of her daughter, Karen, who she carried the movie a little bit more, who's Judy Greer's character. But like, even that wasn't like a strong story for her. It was more about all these other townspeople that were hunting him down. But it's just like, we had no real emotional attachment to them. I guess if you're like an old fan of like the original Halloween movies and you remember those and you remember some of these characters, but like, would you even really remember Kyle's character? 
Like she was one, she was a little girl, you know, she didn't have like a prominent role in the films, not enough to like have an emotional vested interest in her. Like if anything, the only reason we had an emotional vested interest in her is because we watch her on Housewives. It didn't need to be its own movie. It was a bonus episode. I'm glad I watched it on Peacock. Um, you know, I, I would say if you're going to watch it, watch it on Peacock. I wouldn't recommend going into the theaters and spending that sort of money. Wait for Scream. Scream looks like that's going to be a good one. I think it comes out in January, you know, and Courtney Cox comes back and David Arquette comes back and Neve Campbell's here. So that looks like that'll be a cute, good movie. I'll watch that one in theaters. This one, just stream it on Peacock. It's only $4.99, which I was surprised because like Disney Plus makes you have a Disney subscription and buy the movies that they were streaming like Mulan or Cruella. Like you had to buy those as add-ons. So I was expecting to pay like 24 bucks to rent it, but it wasn't. I just had to have a, a Peacock premium, which is only $4.99. So I was like, okay. So make some Halloween cocktails, buy some snacks, watch it in on a good, what, Thursday night when we don't have any housewives to watch. Do it on a Thursday night. You'll ab- appreciate it for what it is. But I would save the theatrical viewing for Halloween Ends, which will come out next year. Okay, Jay Edelson is still going hard at Erica. He's been doing a bit of a press tour. He was recently on the Reality Life with Kate Casey podcast, and now he just did an interview with Fox News. And he's claiming that Bravo is protecting Erica. As we know, he subpoenaed the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills footage from Evolution. So... It's still unclear to me what it is he's looking for exactly or what it is he's hoping to find that could help with the case. Like, is he trying to find conversations that she may have had about having knowledge about what Tom was doing or conversations with Tom directly? Like, I'm, it's uncertain what it is he's hoping to find in this footage. Um, Erica's attorney, Evan C. Borges, has also come forth and he says that he hasn't seen the subpoena yet. And he also isn't sure what Edelson is looking for necessarily. He's also very persistent that they are cooperating with the investigation and, and have continued to provide everything that they've been asked of or have been legally required to turn over. They've turned over all of the documents that Erica is in possession of. As we know, most of the documents sat within Jordy Keese, which the trustee already has access to. Jay Edelson is trying to pursue Erica directly, individually, outside of the trustee outside of the bankruptcy so again it's unclear of what we're hoping to find to incriminate her any further than what the bankruptcy trustee and ronald richards have already put together i mean they are trying to really get her for that 25 million again there hasn't been any forensic accounting of the books we don't know what percentage was entitled to girardi keese what percentage may have been entitled to tom girardi personally if any you know obviously when you do have a business there is a certain percentage that you're allowed to take for a salary we know that tom girardi never took a salary so i would wouldn't be surprised if his legal team tried to argue some of that. I want to see, you know, how many of the clients actually did agree to in- have him invest their money. Like, obviously, he did so much shady shit, and it's very unfortunate the way he ripped off a lot of people. But, you know, within the scope of the law, we still kind of have to figure those pieces out. I also would still really love to see the other lawyers accountable. It's also unclear about what Jay Edelson thinks that Bravo is doing to protect Erica necessarily you know they were interviewed in the L in sorry in the New York Times article that came out what two weeks ago now and they said that you know they haven't given her any preferential treatment they haven't given her any special treatment like they're literally just filming the cast and she happens to be one of the cast members so she's showing up to these cast member things you know some of the cast members like Sutton like Garcelle like um, Dorit, they're questioning Erica. You know, it's all being aired in real time. So I'm not sure how they think that Erica is being protected. If they think that she's being protected by still having a job on the show, then what's the solution to fire her? Because as Ron Richards, as a lot of them have said, she doesn't have the money. She doesn't have the 25 million. The 25 million has been spent. So if they expect her to pay back that 25 million and they're going after her versus going after the other lawyers, the only motive I would see in them going after her is trying to garnish or garner her future wages, you know, what she would be earning from Housewives because she would be one of the highest earners of the people still involved or linked to Tom Girardi. 
if she gets fired, she no longer has that $600,000 paycheck that she gets per season. So they wouldn't necessarily have any money to really go after her for. So are we trying to get her fired so that she doesn't have an income anymore? Because then if she doesn't have an income, then we won't have anything to pay anybody back with. What do you expect her to pay back that $25 million with if there is no income, if there is no job? Like, what do you want her to go work at Marshall's? What She's been photographed at TJ Maxx. What do you want her to just apply for a job there? You're not really going to get much from her if she's working at TJ Maxx. So I'm trying to understand what the motive is. If any, If anybody knows or understands or can further explain that to me, that's unclear to me as to what the motive would be in trying to get her removed from the show. We've already seen she's lost her Fenty deal. Um, I don't know if her social media, I haven't seen her really do any endorsed social media posts. I know there are rumors of her possibly having a sugar daddy or somebody that's helping fund her life right now. If somebody's being a benefactor and giving her money, then that's up to the benefactor. You know, that's not necessarily the benefactor's responsibility to pay off her debts, but if the benefactor is helping to pay her expenses, that's whatever arrangement they have, whether it's a sugar daddy, whether it's a friend, that's, you know, between them. So we'll see how this all shakes out. But Edelson, I like Edelson, and I think he's doing, he's coming at it with the right motive. I just don't understand where he's going or if he's just kind of taking a shot in the dark and hoping something sticks. I'm curious to see how this plays out. I do really want Edelson to have, to win something. I don't know if Erica's, Erica's one of the best bets, but I also just would love to see some of the other lawyers held accountable too. But we're going to have to see how this all shakes out. TBD, 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 TBD. But like, I mean, if Ron Richards wasn't able to really find much with his investigation into Erica, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to be worth milking this cow until powder starts to come out. And then what? Then we're going to be mad that she doesn't have any money left because we milked her dry. Not to defend her, but it's like, what is the the smart angle? What is the play here? If the personal bankruptcy is coming after her and the Jordy Keys bankruptcy is coming after her and now Jay Edelson wants to sue her directly, everybody's going after that one cash cow while also acknowledging that there isn't any money there. Like, it's just, I, I'm trying to... Um, I'm trying to make sense of it all. Um, and for right now, it, it it is, you know, flying right over my naturally platinum blonde hair. Next up, Sutton Strack wants to be a lawyer. She wants to be like Lily Blonde. This headline made me laugh out loud so hard. And at first, I thought it was because... Um, I thought it was something that she said that was taken out of context and made into a clickbait headline. And then I actually read her statements. And no, she really does want to try to become a lawyer. She is interested in planning on taking the LSATs. Listen, I adore Sutton. Um, I don't know about this one. Like she is just, she is doing the most. She's truly doing the most. And she's another one that's milking this this cash cow for as long as she can. Obviously, she's not trying to get any money out of it, but she's definitely, you know, riding on the coattails of this scandal. She's like, let me ride this gravy train until the bitter, bitter end. She said that she studied political science and back in college, and now she's interested in taking the LSATs. This is what Kim Kardashian did did or is in the process of trying to do. So there are very few states, but in California, you are allowed to take the bar exam, which is the exam you need to take in order to get a law license. You're allowed to take the exam without actually having to go to law school. I believe you have to intern with a law firm for a certain number of years, and then you have to actually work at a law firm for a number of years, and you have to study about law in the process of all of that, and then you can take the bar exam. And if you pass the bar exam, you are allowed to become a lawyer. You don't have to go to law school in the state of California in order to take that exam and get a law license. Interesting. Um, I know for a very hot, brief, delusional, late night, drunken second, I did look into it because I was like, hmm, is this something I want to do? Do I want to become a lawyer? I seem to enjoy a lot of this. But then you have to like study like tort law and contract law and criminal law. And you have to be you have, that's all part of the bar exam. And it's it's a lot. And I'm like, mm, maybe I'll just stick to pop culture commentary. But you know what, Sutton? Cute for you. If you're going to do it, do it. Um. I mean, Kim Kardashian has tried to take this route and she's failed, what, three times the bar exam? So we'll see what happens, Sutton. I, I think just stick with your housewives and stick with Sutton concept and we'll be good. Okay, girl? We're good. Paige 
DeSorbo and Craig Conover were spotted filming Southern Charm over the weekend, which I'm excited about. I love this so much. I love them so much. We all know that they're going to crash and burn at some point, but they're such a hot couple and they're just such like a spicy couple that I'm just like, I'm here for all of it. Like, I want to see them make out. I want to see them have a full Courtney and Travis, Megan Fox, Machine Gun Kelly moment. I want to see it all. I think that they are bringing the heat and I can't wait to watch them. What is it? This week is the premiere of Winter House, right? Winter House. So we have Winter House. We have Summer House that will be coming next. It usually premieres what? In like February, February, March-ish. And then we have Southern Charm that is currently filming. So we'll probably have that next summer. I'm ready for it. I couldn't be any more excited. Clearly, there are going to be a lot more crossovers to come. It seems like at this point, Bravo is just like, let's just mix them all up together and have everybody cross over onto the different shows. And hopefully that'll keep things a little interesting and keep things spicy. Lisa Vanderpump wants to make a return, uh, well, reportedly wants to make a return to Real Houses of Beverly Hills. It sounds like her PR team is working extra time. She wants to return. Um, yeah, I mean, talk about speaking of people doing the most. So she says that she'll come, or it's reported that she'll come back, but not for anything less than two mil per season, which is one of the highest salaries of a housewife. And I think you're overshooting your mark here, girl. Like, Come on. Really? She's apparently reportedly won't settle for anything less than what Kyle is making. And right now it's estimated that Kyle's making around $1 million, give or take. Is she worth $2 million? Like, I think her time has ended on the show. Like, the show's evolved beyond her. It's grown past her. She had a good few years. I loved her snark. I loved her snide comments. I loved, you know, her British humor. I thought she was great when she first came onto the show. I thought she carried the show for a good a good chunk. I think her last best season was season five. I think season five was the last best season of the show except for last season and this season. Like, the last season and this season really picked it back up again, but after season five, like, six, seven, eight, and nine, those were Vanderpump's last four seasons, and I feel like those struggled quite a bit. You know, obviously, the Kyle versus Lisa Puppygate fight, that was really good. Goodbye, Kyle. That was all pretty great. But aside from that, like, I don't think Lisa carried her weight. Obviously, you know, they were coming at her a lot, but I just, I don't know. I feel like her time has definitely ended. And like, look, this is a great example. Like, look at Overserved on E, that tanked. Vanderpump Dogs on Peacock, that tanked. Vanderpump Rules is hanging by a thread right now. So I don't even think she has enough clout to even be able to ask for 1 million. You know, I feel like, like, what are you trying to do? It's not like a Bethany situation where when Bethany left the show, you very much felt Bethany's absence on the show. There wasn't much of an absence when Lisa Vanderpump left because we had such a strong cast as it is. I think, you know, one of the strongest casts we've had was season five because that's when we had Lisa Rinna, Eileen Richards, um, or sorry, not Eileen Richards, Eileen Davidson, Kim Richards, Yolanda, Lisa Vanderpump, Kyle, like that was a great cast. Kim and Brandy with Lisa and Eileen, gold. Yolanda, great. We had the Amsterdam, don't you ever talk about my husband. Great fucking season. Um, This season's cast, great cast. I think everybody really came to play this season. Well, I mean, Rena kind of took a back seat this season, but I don't think we need Lisa Vanderpump. And I think even if she thinks that she has enough fans that will want to even watch her, all of the LVP stands, I mean, they weren't, they're strong enough to tear you apart on Twitter, but they're not really strong enough to pull in ratings because all three of her spinoffs are currently circling the drain. So I don't think she has any legs to stand on here. I liked Lisa Vanderpump, but her time is done and we don't need her back. Thank you, next. Okay, let's talk about Vicky Gunvalson and Steve Lodge because this drama is juicy, baby. It's Miss Juicy, baby. So over the weekend, there were rumors that, well, actually prior to this weekend, there were rumors that Steve Lodge broke up with Vicky while she was filming the All Stars spinoff series for Peacock with Dorinda at Bluestone Manor. She's now alluding to the fact that he may have been cheating on her 
which kind of sucks. And at first I was like, oh God, what an awful guy. And then I assumed, oh, he was probably just using her for his political campaign. And then once he lost, he dropped her and he was like, I don't want anything to do with you. You didn't help me win governor. So thank you, next. However, Steve is now coming out and he's like, oh, actually I broke up with her a long time ago and it was way before my campaign. And I've tried to remain friends with her, but like, she just can't let me go. Which first of all, gross. Anytime a man's like, oh, I just wanted to remain friends, but like, you know, they, she just, she was so into me and she just couldn't get over me. Like, fuck off. Okay. Like we all know guys like that. They're like, oh, you know, I can't help it if she just loves my dick so much. Like gross. Okay. No one's dick is that great. Like to be fair, you know, I get it. Sometimes we can hold on to some guys that are bad for us. They're, you know, they're trouble. I knew you were trouble when you walked in red flag, red flag. But I mean, when guys brag about that, and trust me, I've had my fair share that are just like, oh, I didn't know you wanted me that bad. I didn't know you were that into me. It's like, no, motherfucker, you told me that you were into me. So what, I was the dumb one. I misunderstood the assignment and thought when you said you were into me that you were actually into me. I thought, you know, sorry, (laughs) I'm working on my own personal frustrations into this one. But I think it's gross when men like, when men do shit like that, when they're just like, oh, it's not my fault. She's crazy. Yeah, we know Vicky's crazy, but like, come on. I'm pretty sure you're not that innocent in this. I'm pretty sure if you tried to remain friends with her, what was it like a friends with benefits sort of situation? I wouldn't be surprised if you were leading her on just a little bit. But he's like, you know, I wish her the best. But then he went on to then claim that say that she's the one that bought the engagement ring that he proposed to her with and that she just can't let go of their relationship. And he's been done with her for a while And he says that she's just so desperate to be on a show. It doesn't matter what show she'll be on any show. She's just desperate for fame. And she was trying to use him to stay relevant, which I think that goes both ways. I think he was also trying to use her to be relevant either or else before his political campaign, he would have announced that they were broken up. But he thought that the fame with Vicky was enough to help carry him because obviously he didn't really want to run as a single man or run with this new young girlfriend after he was just engaged to Vicky a couple years ago. So I think there's an element of truth in both of their stories. I don't think either of them is telling us the full truth. I think they're telling us their versions of the truth. And I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle. So I also invited Vicky on my show. I invited all the ladies from the All Stars Bluestone Manor spinoff show I didn't really invite any of the ladies from this first season of the Peacock spinoff Ultimate Girls Trip. I don't know if the second season is going to be called Ultimate Girls Trip. It might be. But um, yeah, I invited all of them on. Uh, Taylor Armstrong was supposed to come on my show this week. And then at the last minute, she pulled out. I don't know why. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to reschedule that at some point in the future. I hope so. I'm not sure if Bravo like jumped or sorry, Peacock jumped in and blocked that. And they're like, we don't want any of them doing any press right now because we don't want any leaks to get out about the series. So who knows? TBD. But I did invite Vicky on and she wrote me a very like rude email. It was very like rude decline about like, I'm not going to be on your podcast. Like I have a full-time job. I don't have time to do your podcast. And it was very much like, because I always give people the option. If they're local to Los Angeles, I always say, hey, you have the option of coming in studio or you have the option of calling into Zoom. Obviously, if somebody's not in state or not local, then they call into Zoom and that's easy. But if they are local, I like to give them the option because I like to tape in studio. I think it's just a much more fun experience. But Vicky was like, I'm not going in studio. Like, hello, it's like a two hour drive from Orange County to Los Angeles, which is not true. I mean, I guess it depends on traffic, but still, she's like, it's a two hour drive to just go into Los Angeles. And you think that's worth my time to do a 40 minute interview? I was like, okay, bitch, you could have just said no, thank you. Or I'm sorry, I can't right now. Or I don't know, make something up. Don't be a bitch. Like shit. Anyway, anyway, um, because I'm so grateful to so many of you and I love you all so much. I wanted to do a couple of quick shout outs for some of the really nice reviews that you've left me because I got some really hot and cold reviews over the weekend. And so I wanted to just show love to the people that left me really nice, sweet reviews because I'm very very grateful to all of you. Um, let's see. Fed Up says, I respect you. Every time I listen to you, I respect you more and more and more. Thank you for being logical in a very emotional world. And thank you for not giving into the trolls. You stand on your own mountain and I respect that. And I find it 
very hopeful. You're a great example on an open dialogue. I really appreciate that fed up. Um, I respect many of you guys because a lot of you are very level headed. You don't operate from an irrational, emotional place. Obviously, some of you do. Some of you do. I don't like to respond to those DMs. I rarely respond to those comments on YouTube. And I'm very grateful that, you know, for those of you that listen to my message and understand whatever message it is that I'm putting out there, you're obviously ready to hear that message. And for those of you that aren't, thank you next. Um, you know, you just aren't ready to hear that yet, but thank you guys. I love you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> well, this one's a little funny from Tari J. She gave me three stars. She said, love you, but do less of the live content. I love the content interviews and solo episodes, but can't stand the episodes where you read comments live and keep thanking people for badges. I appreciate that he's grateful to the listeners, but I usually skip those episodes after about 15 minutes. The flow is off and I find it frustrating to listen to. Otherwise, I love the podcast. Well, thank you, Terry J. Tari J. Um, yeah, th thank you. I appreciate that. So sweet. So nice of you. Okay, so the the reviews came in really, and they're very hot and cold. I either got like five star reviews or one lots of one star reviews over the weekend. Um, but here's the thing: if you're still here and you're still listening to me, I'm very grateful. Eighty two hashtag ww parentheses parentheses says smarty pants Zach only shares accurate accurate the most updated and accurate information going deep dives to authenticate anything before it's aired. Love is up the attitude, snarky comments and humor. Plus he's a wine connoisseur. Yes. Plug hashtag no filter wine, no filter wine.com. Thank you so much. 82 Abby M five, two, six says me and my girlfriend listen to Zach all the time on our car rides and watches Instagram lives. Whenever we have the chance, his opinions on everything is unique and we just love his take on everything. Housewives love you, Zach. Thank you, Abby. Love you too. Hope you and the girlfriend had some very hot sex over this weekend. Spurs fan for life says best Bravo podcast by far. Wasn't really looking for a new podcast because I already listened to so many. And when I heard Zach's take on different on a different podcast, I thought he was hilarious and refreshing. I love that he really tries to stay fair in his opinions while still entertaining. Also, his take on L.A., Hollywood and reality TV is so insightful and he doesn't fall for clickbait or media tricks. He looks for the truth. Now he's my favorite podcast, IG and YouTube to subscribe to. Thank you so much, Spurs fan for life. You Lander says best Bravo content. Zach's podcast gives us the this gives us great discussions about Bravo celebs. Zach doesn't pick a side and instead gives feedback on recent episodes and suggests ways in which Bravo can keep viewers interested. I often find myself nodding in agreement. Five stars. Thank you so much, You Lander. Thank you, thank you. Is it like your Lander Foster? Stevie G. Great podcast. Really enjoy this podcast. Listen to it when I get ready for work. Love that most episodes are condensed to less than an hour, but still packed with great info and great tea. Thank you so much, Stevie G110. Stevie G in the house. I critty. Loving it all. Oh my God, I can't get enough. Keep spilling it. Thank you, I critty. Um, and last one that I'll read, Die Gal 704, Liddy City. I first came across Zach when he was interviewed by another podcast. He sounded so fun. So I gave his podcast a try and I absolutely love it. Zach is very fun and positive guy. He has the best tea and serves it hot with a good time. He's very thorough with the information he reports. His presentation is so good. If you love pop culture and reality television, give him a follow. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate reading these. They make my mornings. I like to read them in the morning. Um, I like to go through some of the comments on YouTube and I'm just very grateful. So thank you. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Monday thus far. Like I said, I'm going to take some time to go and be with my family and spend it with my grandpa. I'm going to go get a cake right now. I'm going to go get some flowers and you know, we're just going to have a good day. So love you guys. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And remember, no more Scott Disick energy. We want a Travis Barker. That is all we are settling for, ladies and gentlemen. Travis Barker's all the way. You either show me some R-E-S-P-E-C-T or I will show you the E-X-I-T. Bicep girl. Thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me. You can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. Give the show a follow at No Filter with Zach. Get ready. Book club with Dave Quinn's book, Not All Diamonds and Rosé. We're kicking that off next Tuesday. So no book club this week, but we will still be going live on the Instagram this Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. Those episodes are uploaded on Friday. I'm sorry if you don't like those episodes, but skip our Friday episodes if you don't like the live format. It is more informal. It's not as structured. Um, there isn't a guest and it is me interacting with people. Some people love the episodes, some don't. If you don't love those episodes, then stick to our Monday, Wednesday episodes. But I do hope that uh, you are enjoying all the content that I've been putting out there. Thank you, guys. I will talk to you all uh, this Thursday. 
on the Instagram live, unless there's some other juicy news that breaks that I'll be sure to, to put on out there. But I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful time. If you have not ordered some already, please go and check out my rosé line, my wine line at nofilterwine.com. Five fun designs, one light, crisp, fizzy rosé. So go give it a try. Nofilterwine.com. All right, guys. Love you, love you, love you. Mean it, mean it, mean it. Ciao for now. Bye.